I want you to have a look at the week ahead as this week's going to be quite a volatile week, I believe, on the markets. I'm going to look at some of the index funds from across the globe. But one of the reasons being that this week, I believe, is going to be a very volatile week is because most of the central banks from the major economies, such as the UK, um, China, America, they are looking at interest rate decisions and sort of monetary policy uh, summaries as such. So therefore, there's going to be a lot of movement specifically towards the back end of the week, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, as the banks decide how they want to go ahead with stimulus and specific policies they're having in place. Uh, it's the 20th of September. My name's Tyrone and you're watching Mini Pip. Jumping straight into the video, there's a few things that I'm going to look at. Firstly, starting with the index funds. As of recording this, most of the index funds are down and the volatility index is up significantly, which is the fear index. So a lot of investors currently are getting worried. It's probably to do with inflation and some other load of stuff which scares investors as it does. But that being said, I'm still a buyer, even with these big falls, even with the stagnation that we've had in August and the fact that we're declining in September, I still think there's a positive outlook. There is a few issues. Um, if we look at the DAX first, it's now changed to 40 constitutions as opposed to 30, so there's an extra 10 companies within the fund. That doesn't really change it. It's not changed the price, neither probably changed the weighting, but it's not changed the price. Looking at the fund, I'm looking for entry points probably somewhere in the region of the 50 period moving average. We go down and we go up something like that. If we break there, then potentially we go towards the next moving average. And then worst case scenario, we go down towards here. I think to see it down over here would take something quite significant, which I don't think I, I just I don't think that's gonna happen. I would be a buyer, but probably later on in the week before I continue to go maybe go long on this, and that's because of the the banks that are uh, reporting the sort of changes to potential you know the stimulus that is, is given around the uh, around the world so for the time being despite the fact that all these are down i'm not going to be looking to do a position as of yet you know we do have the support down at the moving average and it's the same with the nasdaq which is looking a bit stronger so i was going to pick over the dax or the nasdaq i probably pick the the nasdaq so we do have the trend line which is still holding um, all the way down to sort of 15,000. It would be good to see this back down to 15,000. It would probably provide a good opportunity to get long somewhere in the region of here to then go higher. Stop losses as such would probably want to be a bit further down somewhere in the region of about 14 to 50 with your targets in the region of 16,000. And I do think that we will get there at some point this year. And if we don't, then so be it. But I still would be a buyer. I am not a seller in these markets, despite the fact that you know, the VIX is up and people are on Twitter and stuff are saying short the markets like mad. That's probably one of the reasons why the markets go up because when more people short it, at some point as such, they would have to buy that back at a later price, causing the price to go up more. Looking at the FTSE, the FTSE is a bit of a difficult one because the FTSE is just, it, it underperforms most of the markets. There is this like sort of support here, which I can see at this moment in time, which I'm, I would like to see sort of holes so potentially a long going right now towards here would be okay where you put your stop loss would probably be somewhere in the region of about 6,500 you probably want to be giving yourself quite a bit of room on this one uh, it's I, I don't really like to trade the FTSE it's it's a bit of a slow moving sort of index but generally right now that's quite a big dip um, for the FTSE so that could provide a good opportunity to go long I'm watching very closely to see if we break this sort of these levels here at sort of 6,825. If we break below then we could go a lot further. Dow Jones is the same situation as the DAX. We have broken a trend line which was there. I'm aiming towards 32,500 as such this 50 period moving average before I'd look to go long. Unless on Wednesday the Federal Reserve come and say that they're going to keep interest rates where they are and they're going to put more money into the economy. If that was going to be the case, you're going to see this go straight back up to all-time highs. And again, I'm still a buyer. I'm not a seller of any of these markets and I never will be. As the past has told us, 
trying to short this and catch the dip is oh, sorry trying to short this and try to catch that decline is very difficult yep i'm sure plenty of people who shorted it up here have made a lot of money but as you'll see from the longer term the go up therefore i would be buying when i think is appropriate right now not too sure wait for a little bit more of a pullback looking at some more specific stocks Canberra Energy, we are looking at a pre-market open at about 160. So we're gonna be opening around five or six percent lower. We are overbought on the you know the daily time frames, but as I've said in some of my previous videos about this stock, I'm not bothered about that. What I'm interested uh, interested in, sorry, is the short interest on the stock, and it is it is pretty massive to be fair. There has been, you know, it's been trading at around hundred between 100 and 300 million shares per day for the last sort of week and a half. So there's a massive interest in this share. And I still think that we're gonna go higher. $2 is where I'm aiming for, followed by three, and then $5 in the medium term. And that's because as well, there's some fundamental side of things of Canva, as well as the short squeeze, which is currently taking place. So with this stock, $2 is the target. First, I'll probably sell a small portion there, $3, then $5. And if we do fall, I will be, yeah, well, I don't know. I'd probably have a lot of stop loss somewhere in the region of these lows here, around 90 cents, take about a 30% hit on that. But for the potential to make three, 400%, in my opinion, it's worth it. It's not financial advice. Please don't say that as advice. That's my personal opinion. Now, looking at Disney, this is a stock that I've watched for some time. We are just sitting range bound all the time and we will continue to stay range bound, I think, for the time being. I think a move back towards the region of 175 towards 170 would be a nice buying area to then go long. I am a complete buyer on Disney. I would never short that stock and it would be a great addition to anybody trying to build up a portfolio in a stocks and shares ISA or just a general investment account or SIP or however it be that you invest. Disney is a great stock. It has great, just it's just a great business and I would not see any reason to short if it was buying it here, buying it down here or even buying it up here. It's a great stock. Codal Minerals is a stock that I've tracked for a long time, probably since I even started Mini Pit, you know, all the way back when it was like 0.4 of a penny. Currently we're sat at 0.3 of a penny. We have broken out of this trend, you know, descending trend line, which has been around since July. Whether we can continue, I'm not too sure at this moment. If we have a general pullback, we could get a slight pullback in Codal, but I'd probably be looking for entries at around there with targets somewhere in the region of 50 or half a pence by sort of November, December time, somewhere in the region of here. And I think it's very possible. It's a very good business and it's very undervalued for what they do. So, I, you know, there's, there's no reason for it, in my opinion, to go down. Looking at another stock is AMD. So again, uh, you know, I'm a big buyer of this one. I wouldn't be a seller, even though the market's down two and a half percent or even it's, you know, from the highs, it's down about 10 ish percent, I think, just check. So it's down quite a bit. I think it was it, yeah, 17%. So this, it could drop 30%, you know, there's, there's nothing to say that if the market pulls back in the next week or so, we could see this back to this moving average. And what we'll find is that, you know, we had this, in 2019, great rally, and then we just sort of sat there, and over the space of 2020, we recovered, we had the pandemic, and then we, we shot up, and we could just get something like that, and then eventually we go higher. That is what we may get. We've got massive volume and a lot more interest. We do have MACD turning negative, and RSI reads about, looks like about 56 maybe there. So yeah, maybe a, a bit more of a pullback towards the $100 level, oh sorry, the 100 yeah, $100 level exactly, followed by sort of 95. I, I wouldn't be a seller. I just, I just, I still wouldn't, even if, if we're falling. Maybe 95 towards 91, buying on each one of these declines, ready for a next up. My target for AMD is about 140 in the next six to 12 months, and I do think we will get there. There's massive business for what they do. Moderna is another stock that I looked at, and I think, again, I, I'm a bit mixed on this one. And I think as a short term play, it's a good stock because the vaccine rollout is allowing them to see record business. And if the vaccine becomes something like the flu jab where you have to get it every year, then Moderna's repeat business is gonna be astounding. It's gonna be amazing in fact, and they're gonna go higher and they're gonna be worth more because all the money that they're making, they can put into redevelopment for 
new drugs for new vaccines and stuff like that. But if it is just a matter of once you get the booster jab and then you get another jab and then that be it, then Moderna may struggle and it could come down in value after the pandemic's gone. Whether it does or not, nobody knows. But generally, you know, I for the time being, while these vaccines are still being rolled out and while there's these booster shots that have to be given, I would be targeting towards $600 a share. I'll be buying on the dip. So today we've got a decline of 3% towards 416 a share. We have support all the way down to 400. Break below 400 potentially takes us to about 330, 320. That's not a problem. My target is 600. I think we'll get there in the next six to 12 months as such. So these declines which potentially are happening now could provide a good opportunity to go long on any of these stocks, to be fair. So generally, the market's not looking too great. If we look at the commodity markets really quick and just quickly have a look at gold. Again, gold is struggling in my opinion. I'm not quite sure where I, it's difficult to say as such where I think we're going. In my opinion, I think we're going down. I don't think we're going up because we've had a lot of opportunities to try and go along and we haven't been able to do it just as of yet. We have quite tough resistance above. We've got moving averages above. We've got you know, these lines everywhere, you know, 1, 8, 1800, 1850, 1900, they're all going to prove pretty difficult. And this flash crash, we've, tried, we've bought into it and we've declined again. Again, with the Federal Reserve speaking on Thursday or Wednesday, I just have to check. Um, we're going to have big movements in these markets. I'll just check when it is. Yes, yeah, so it's Wednesday that they speak uh, and then the UK speak on Thursday and we have China I believe speaking uh, so we've got Japan speaking on Wednesday and China speaking on Wednesday and then USA speaking on Wednesday and then we have the UK speaking on Thursday so Wednesday is going to be either a very very good day for the markets or a very very bad day I'm going to have a lot of movement and I think I will probably stay on the sidelines for most of this week just trying to scalp little positions here and there but nothing big just because there's a lot of information going on and there's a lot of potential changes that could happen. I'm still longing my Canberra energy for anybody who's followed me and obviously I've got my targets on that. So as of that standing, nothing has changed. I'll be updating everything on my on my website. Palantir is another one that I've been looking at. Silverboat is another one as well and a few other FX pairs and some other index funds and companies as well. So if you like what you're seeing and you like the channel, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.